Hey guys, this is Accounting Nightmare, and this is our Scarlet Monastery Challenge Mode run. So this one we had a fair bit of trouble with, there's just a little, a lot of little kinks we had to work out. At the start here, we go left for this group. There's a pile of corpses here, and it keeps spawning zombified corpses, so that has to go down first. And once that's dead, you can pretty much just AoE everything else. Uh, be careful of the Scarlet Flamethrower, he does that, you know, that flamethrower move. So you get out of the way if you're melee. And then once everything else is dead, we move down the back of the room towards the boss. There's a lot of extra trash here that you don't need, and you need to be careful that you don't aggro them. You sort of run down this path on the left of these uh, tombstones, and you shouldn't aggro anything. And hopefully you'll break combat here so you can drink. For these two big groups of ghosts, they're very dangerous if you don't handle them, right? The idea is that the lower health they are, the more damage they do, and the slower they move. So your tank rounds them all up, and then you put stuns on them while DPSing them down. And your tank can mainly get the hell out of there, <laughs> because yeah, at this point, see, they're, they're pretty much just locked in place, and they will murder anyone who gets near them. They'll easily just obliterate your tank, so your tank has to get out of there pretty quick. And your DPS needs to get there pretty quick to start DPSing them down, so that they can be kited properly. Yeah, we pull the boss. Uh, make sure you finish off those red spirits. Otherwise you'll be locked in combat at the end of the fight. You can't just leave him alive. Yeah, this boss, uh, he's not that tough. He's pretty much just all about adds. Just tons of adds. And there is one move you have to watch out for as a healer. He does a move called Evict Soul. It's a debuff he puts on a random person. And uh, when the debuff expires, it will create a little sort of soul image, soul fragment thing. And whether you dispel it or not, this soul fragment will get created, so that doesn't really matter. But the debuff does tons of damage per tick, so you need to dispel it nice and quick, or people are going to be taking loads of damage here. So as the fight goes on, the boss spawns more and more empowered zombies. So the tank damage starts off rather light, and then it slowly ramps up as the fight goes on. We ignore the empowered zombies. It's just a waste of DPS, really. You just want to burn the boss down as fast as you can. Uh, the smaller adds, uh, they might die from cleave damage. They're not a big deal. Just make sure that the boss dies. And make sure that you're dispelling Evict Soul. Just be careful with your mana so you don't burn yourself out towards the end of the fight here. And I can't use Guardian Spirit here because I need it for the next group. The next group of trash is pretty scary. You've got a couple of options here. You can pull them out of the doorway to where I am now. Or you can fight them inside the room. Uh, we, we pulled them out of the doorway for quite a while, but uh, then we started fighting them inside the room and it seemed to work a lot better. So there's a couple of neutral guys there. Uh, our tank picks them up first, puts his tiger on one of them, and then he grabs a patrol from around the corner. And now we rotate stuns, and this group hurts a lot. Uh, make sure you interrupt the heals by the zealots, and just try and get the fanatics down because they do a ton of damage. And that this is where I use both of my cooldowns, like Guardian Spirit and Void Shift, because yeah, that group is really scary. They also do a flame strike. Make sure no one's standing in that. And now for the Invispots. So we had a problem where sometimes one of us would aggro. And as you can see here, one of us aggroed, but all of us are invisible. And I think it might have been me. Like, I think um, I think the Invispots might be client-side, and I think aggro might be server-side. So I think it's possible for me to aggro, but still get invisible. So, whoops. <laughs> I killed several people with that. Sorry. Not sure if it was me, I'm just speculating. And so the second boss, uh, you want to pull him when he's between those two groups, otherwise you'll get extra adds. And you don't want that, because you you don't need to kill those guys at all. Uh, this guy, once you work out what to do, he's really not hard. you just got to have your positioning just right. So he's got a blazing fist move, where he sort of he shoots out a cone of fire. Uh, it'll hurt anyone standing in it, so just make sure your tank moves out of it, or he pops a cooldown like our monk tank just did. 
Yeah, so make sure he's pointed away from the crew so that that doesn't hit anyone except the tank. He also has this Firestorm kick. He will always use this at the person furthest away. So we have our hunter standing out there, sort of uh, soaking it. And the rest of us are standing a little bit closer, so that uh, we should never have to move because we're already out of the range of it. Because it is a big AoE. And as he gets lower in health, he starts doing this, uh, I think it's called blazing ground or something like that. He leaves fire on the ground where he runs. And it hurts a hell of a lot. <laughs> Uh, make sure your tank doesn't touch it, and if you've got melee DPS, then they'll have to um, they'll have to attack the boss while not being in the fire. I imagine it's a bit awkward to get the angle right, but um, practice makes perfect, as they say. And I help out with DPS on this guy a fair bit. Uh, he does a lot more tank damage than I would expect, so you just got to watch out for that. He always surprises me with just how how hard he hits. Yeah, now you want to run straight into the cathedral, and you need to make sure you're in between these two groups, or you will aggro. It's a very tight line. Line yourself up between those two benches, and then sort of run between those two lines. And you should never aggro. We go straight to the left, and pick up these two purifiers. And there is a patrolling purifier, and he was in just the right spot for us this time, for us to aggro right away. Uh, the one furthest away... Um, you need to pull them in with like a death grip or silence them so they come in. But um, if you don't have that, then they'll probably come straight for you as the healer. So I line of sighted him around the pillar. He did get a spell off on me, it hurt like hell. But uh, it made it easier for our tank to pick him up. And now it's time for a big group of four. These groups really hurt. Uh, we try to burn down one of the fanatics. Because the fanatics have a stacking buff on themselves that makes them do more and more damage. Now, I think you can dispel it. So yeah, so we try and burn one of them down and also interrupt the Zealot's heal and run out of the flame strike. You notice a huge difference in tank damage once one of the fanatics is down. Yeah, then we move to the right side of the room, kill these two single purifiers. They don't hurt much at all. They're pretty weak. You can interrupt their spells if you want, but they don't really hurt that much. Yeah, see, that did pretty much no damage. <laughs> now for a second group of four. So our tank uses uh, some of his cooldowns on the first group, and on this one I use Guardian Spirit. And rotate stuns as much as you can, of course. Leg Sweep and um, Ring of Frost. And once again, we, we have someone interrupt the heal from the Zealot, and we have the other DPS focus down one of the Fanatics. Yeah, we had a lot of trouble with tank deaths here. The tank can just go from full to zero in just over a global cooldown. Yeah, we, we use stuns as well, we rotate our stuns, and then once the stuns are over, the fanatics would just obliterate our tank. But uh, once we started focusing our fanatic down and dispelling them, then um, things got a hell of a lot easier. And this little judicator patrol, we just pick him up, he's pretty weak. And there's a group around the corner. Uh, you can run over to them if you want, or you can pull them around the corner like we do. It's a big group, but they don't hurt at all. They're really weak. Most of them are initiates, which don't hurt at all. You just got a Zealot who has a heal to interrupt. Looks like the initiates can heal too, but they mustn't heal for very much because there's, there's so many of them, I don't know how you're supposed to interrupt at all. So I get stuck in combat for a little bit there, so I start drinking a bit late. And I almost lose our tank because he gets stunned out of line of sight. It was very close here. Yeah, but this group of three, uh, we pull them and we CC one of them. Because our enemy counter is at 38 out of 40, and now it's 39 out of 40. We just have to finish off this Judicator and then we've uh, killed all the enemies we need to kill. Because you do need to uh, fulfill that criteria. Or you'll finish the challenge mode and it won't actually finish. <laughs> you do need to tick off all those little um, things on the side there. All those little objectives. Yeah, so that's that last ad in that group. We leave him CC'd for this whole fight, because we don't need to kill him, it's just a waste of DPS. And at the start of this boss fight, uh, that's where I find most of the damage is on the tank, because the tank will probably have an ad or two at the same time as the boss, so... Be ready to use any cooldowns you have. 
This guy's pretty much, um, he does hit pretty hard. Not as hard as the second boss, I don't think. But most of it's uh, group wide damage. He does a lot of crazy moves where he just right, runs around hitting everyone. I find I, I burn through most of my mana on just this guy. But you do get a chance to regenerate mana on the next on the next boss because she doesn't hit very hard at all. And once she's down, White Mane comes out, just like in classic Scarlet Monastery. Yeah, she, as I said, she does not hit hard at all. Um, but she is very dangerous because of two spells she does. Uh, one is Mass Resurrection and one is Dominate Mind. Both have to be interrupted. Mass Resurrection will you know, bring all of the adds in the room back to life and then you die horribly. Uh, and Dominate Mind, if she gets that off, she'll mind control someone for a really long time. I think it's I think it's about a minute or something equally ridiculous. That can easily end your gold run right there. Because that's, that's one DPS just out of the fight completely. So have your interrupts sorted before you get here. Have one person assigned to Mass Resurrection. And have the other people on Dominate Mind. Yeah, and then she stuns you and she goes and resurrects uh, Durand. And uh, she'll probably do a mass res in Dominate Mind right after she finishes resing, so be really careful about that. Get ready to get over there and interrupt as soon as you can. Now that both of them are up, we, we burn down White Mane first, because even though she does pretty much no damage, her, interrupt, uh, her spells we need to interrupt are just so dangerous. It's best to just get her out of the way and then you can focus on Durand. Yeah, and we're still keeping that guy CC in the corner. Make sure he doesn't break CC while you're stunned. But when White Mane stuns you so she can go resurrect her buddy, make sure the CC isn't going to break during that, because that would probably hurt. It didn't happen to us, but I assume it would be pretty bad. And now it's just Turan, and he's exactly the same as before. Uh, except that now I'm almost out of mana. <laughs> so I try and get away with just normal heal as much as possible. Heal hits for like a wet noodle, but it takes no, pretty much no mana because it's mana neutral. I could also pop Divine him here. I must have missed it coming off cooldown. Yeah, so it looks like he has two different moves. Dashing Strike where he actually disappears and is untargetable and he hurts everyone. And Flash of Steel where he just runs around hitting everyone. So it's a lot of group damage going around here. Yeah, it's very easy to run out of mana here, but he's dead, so yeah. That's Scarlet Monastery. And I'll see you next time for Stormstout Brewery. See ya.